Hey guys, my name is Jason with Not Baker Mining Metals, and on today's video, I want to do a little bit of a follow-up one on a one I posted a couple weeks ago about smelting PCBs. So to give you a quick background on this, this is some stuff that we ran through our PCB turnkey system, ground up a bunch of motherboards and junk, and this is the number one, and that's the number two over there. Uh, off our shaker table and you may have remembered I smelted it down had some trouble with some impurities uh, we had a, a melting point problem with some of the iron uh, and so I, I magged out some of the iron and, and got this little button here um, which was a little bit better but a lot of you guys had some good suggestions about uh, acids using some acids to eat up all this stuff go after the precious metals so I wanted to follow up here um, and try out one of you guys suggested try using some sulfur in there and I got to thinking about that and that's actually a pretty good idea and I want to try that and I'm going to tell you why. Uh, the, there's something called the metals reactivity chart and basically what it says is um, there's a, an order in which metals are from least reactive to most reactive and some of the more reactive metals are uh, aluminum, zinc, and iron and some of the least reactive metals are uh, lead, copper, and then all the way up into gold, platinum, palladium, that kind of stuff. Um, so my thought is, is that if I can add some sulfur to this, and even if uh, some of the copper gets uh, turned to copper sulfide, when it touches, when that copper sulfide atom touches uh, like an iron atom, it'll switch and it'll go, it'll reduce the copper and turn it into iron sulfide. And so I'm going to try and because copper is fairly uh, low reactivity and gold and silver are as well. I'm going to try and um, sulfidize, I guess, uh, the the more reactive metals in here, the zinc, uh, the iron, um, and then some of the tin and the lead. And hopefully we can purify our copper some, get in that, you know, 95% copper range with a little bit of precious metals. And I know we won't get all the lead and all the stuff out of this, but if we can reduce it quite a bit, then... Um, then it'll be a lot easier to electro win and get our copper, our anode slimes, and uh, and then refine the precious metals that way. So um, that's kind of my plan. That's a little overview. But let's get started. We'll mix up uh, some of this and some sulfur in a crucible, and we'll get it smelting and see what happens. Well, I was getting ready to uh, get the stuff ready for smelting. I realized that our cone mold still has all this junk in here, and if I pour anything in here, it's just going to get stuck tighter in a drum. And so what I'm going to do is... I'm going to try something because this is pretty much, I can't use it at all right now. Um, so I'm going to put it in the furnace. I'm going to heat it up to about 800 or 1,000 degrees Fahrenheit. And I'm going to put some lead in there. And hopefully the lead can alloy with whatever's sticking out here. It shouldn't touch the steel at that temperature. And it should alloy all these uh, base metals off of here. I'll pour the lead into some water and uh, get our lead shot. And hopefully clean up the inside of this a little bit so we can use it again. Well, that actually worked pretty good. Uh, I think I got most of the contamination off of there. I think the lead alloyed with whatever junk was stuck to the sides. And uh, I'm hoping the more I use it, as I pour hot stuff in there, it'll it'll just kind of clean it up more. But um, now we got a cone mold, hopefully that is going to work. And uh, now we'll get our PCB stuff smelted down. I've got 200 grams of the number one kind of crushed up. I got it as small as I could there. Uh, 200 grams there, and I'm gonna use the sulfur I found at the hardware store. It's like 90 
something percent, 90 percent sulfur. Uh, and I don't, I actually don't know how much this stuff I'm going to use. Let's let's throw in, um, I don't know, 100 grams, and see what happens. And then I'll put another 100 grams or so of soda ash, and maybe a little bit of borax, maybe 50 grams of borax, and uh, we'll smelt it down and see what happens. There's 100 grams of sulfur. It's actually quite a bit by volume. Um, now let me add, I'm going to add 100 grams of soda and 50 grams of borax. All right, we're all mixed up in our crucible. And this is one of those times where I actually have no idea what's going to happen. I don't know if it's going to melt, not do anything, uh, if it's going to explode. <laughs> um, what I've read is when you mix... Uh, usually when you take sulfur and a metal and, and heat them up, it's really exothermic reaction, so it'll release a lot of uh, heat. Um, so I don't know how, how exciting this is going to be. Um, but we're gonna, we're gonna throw it in there and see what happens. We're starting with some really low heat. And the sulfur's already starting to melt in the surface. I tried spraying my mold with WD-40 to see if I could get it to stick less. Well, moment of truth here. Two things. Let's see if we can get this knocked out of the mold. And then let's see if we got our metal. It poured really nice. It poured perfect. Hey, nice. Well, our cone mold's back in service. I'm not quite sure what we got here, but... Looks like a little bit of metal there, a bunch of red, and then the slag. Let's uh, let me uh, let me see what we got here. I'll break it up with a hammer, and uh, we'll go from there. All right, guys. Well, I got impatient again, and it's still kind of gooey in the middle there. Um, but we got a little metal prill on top, and look at how nice and coppery colored that is. So we got some metal, that's good. And let's see if I can come over here and we can get a look at this. There's a thin little layer of slag and all that is sulfides. So I probably added 10 times as much sulfur as I needed, um, but boy, it did its job. It combined with everything, melted it all down. Um, and 
the slag is sitting there on top. So um, this is kind of cool. It's kind of like, you know, what I deal with uh, for my gold mining stuff in reverse. In gold mining, I'm trying to get rid of all the sulfides. And here I'm trying to add sulfides to absorb the more reactive metals. So um, this actually is pretty cool. It worked, it worked really well for our first pass. What I'm going to do is I'm going to do it again. And instead of adding 100 grams of sulfur, I'm going to add 10 grams of sulfur and uh, throw some nails in there again and, uh, and see what happens. Okay, hold on. The mystery deepens here because I took our what I thought was our copper bead, hit it with a hammer, and it is brittle as all can be. Shiny silver on the inside, super brittle. I have no idea what that is. It shouldn't, it shouldn't be a sulfide because the sulfide should all combine there over with the, with the mat essentially is what we made. Um, but I have no idea what this is. So that's kind of interesting. I'm going to have to zap that with the XRF. But let's try our, let's try our 10 grams of sulfur and see if we can get some actual metal. All right, guys, here's our second one with the 10 grams of sulfur. Uh-oh. There we go. So, there's a lot more metal there. Slag looks good. Let's break it up, see what we can get. Okay, let's bust this up here. So it looks like we've got a little layer of mat on top of some metal there. So there's much less mat in this one. A lot of slag, which is good. Let's see about that metal there. Hey, look at that nice copper cone there. And you can see a little bit of mat, maybe, what, a quarter inch there? There's some more. There you go. I don't know if you can see that. Can you see that? Nice copper cone. All metal. It poured just perfect. I think we're onto something here, guys. That's pretty cool. Let me uh, let me grind a surface on this and get it XRF'd and see what we got here. But I'm really encouraged. And we might not even need 10 grams. We might need only 5. Um... And I did not put any iron in this one. Um, now I'm kind of wishing I had. But I wanted, to, I wanted, to, I didn't know what this stuff was. This is from our first one, this, this hard metallic stuff. So I wanted to just give it, um, you know, a chance just by itself with nothing else in there. And, uh, well, it looks pretty good. All right. I got a couple nice polished sides here. We'll get this zapped. Um, and I weighed it here. And it weighs about 150 grams. 
So we lost 50 grams of junk, which is about 25% by weight. And uh, that's just about the amount of copper that was in there. It was about 70, 75% copper by our last uh, XRF measurement and our last experiment. So um, we may have eaten up all the base metals we didn't want and hopefully just got the copper and the silver and any little bit of gold that's in there in this block. Okay guys, so we got three different samples. Here's the XRF for our metallic block from our second uh, smelt. Here's the XRF results from the matte layer that we made. And then here's the XRF from the little metallic brittle block we got where most of it, uh, most of the metals ended up in the matte, in the sulfide matte. All right, guys, so that turned out actually pretty cool. Um, we, let's see, what did we do? A little bit of sulfur, so about 5% by weight. Um, looks like it eats up almost all the iron, and it allows for a really, really nice pour. I also think that if you added some iron nails or an iron rod while you're smelting, that you could uh, pretty much almost eliminate that matte phase altogether and reduce any additional copper or lead that is uh, stuck in your mat. So you're gonna end up with a metal block and uh, slag on top that's gonna contain most of the iron sulfide if you make it basic enough, and then you're gonna have your metallic block in the bottom. Now, the other thing that's cool is um, we remove, or I guess by removing the iron, uh, we have mostly our metal block is copper and tin. It's about 95% copper and tin, which is like a bronze, I think, is essentially what bronze is. Uh, there's a little bit of lead, there's a little bit of nickel, there's a little bit of zinc. Um, but I think by eliminating all that other junk, a lot of the zinc we got out, a lot of the iron we got out, I think whatever the stainless little clips and stuff are in there, uh, we removed all that stuff. So that's really good. We, we can now, um, with adding a little bit of sulfur, make our pores. It's all fluid. It comes down to a nice block. Um, and by adding a little bit of iron, to our smelt um, in the form of a rod, we can hopefully get a, a nice pour, no mat, uh, a slag layer, a metallic layer, and uh, and we'll have uh, we'll have our, our blocks or our anodes or whatever we need to do, and then we can start electro winning away our copper and uh, dealing with the anode slime. So we're we're coming along, we're getting really close on our uh, refining methods. But the other thing that was kind of cool is uh, that, that little brittle metallic block that we did uh, where I added 100 grams of sulfur and I just flooded the whole system with sulfur. Almost all the other metals got eaten up. The tin actually seems to be really um, not very reactive with the sulfur. So we had a lot of tin. Uh, we had a lot of copper in there as well. Um, but it made it really, really brittle. But what we did see in our XRF results on those is we saw some silver show up, we saw some gold show up, and we saw some palladium show up. So by uh, using uh, flooding the system with sulfur, essentially, we've uh, uh, combined with all the base metals and we've concentrated all of our precious metals in that little tiny uh, block of, of metal there. So that was pretty cool. That might be another option for us to uh, concentrate out all of our precious metals by flooding it with sulfur and then uh, taking the mat that we made and adding a bunch of iron back in, reducing all those metals back to uh, metallic form. And then you're gonna, you're gonna have your copper, you're gonna have your lead, you're gonna have your, your tin um, and anything else that we that, that went into that, that sulfide mat. So um, I think it was a, a, a really interesting test. I think it worked really, really well. There's definitely still some, some kinks to work out, but being able to, to you know, essentially dissolve or get rid of all that iron, that stainless steel, and being able to get a nice fluid pour and a nice melt in our propane furnace at about 2,000 degrees Fahrenheit is, uh, is super exciting for me. So now we actually have a path forward uh, to take these two uh, 
um, kind of trays of metal here behind us from our PCBs and pour them into our cone mold. And we're going to actually get um, real metal blocks. And actually what I, what I might do is take these uh, two trays here behind me and pour them into ingots or bars or, or plates. And then we can start looking at uh, electro winning away the copper and dealing with the anode slime. So um, stay tuned for more videos on this. I'm pretty excited about where we're going. If you have any questions or comments or advice for me on this process, uh, please leave me a comment in the description below. Um, otherwise, thanks for watching, and we'll see you on the next video.